Hi all. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira and today we're going to talk about rosy toned palettes. That seems to be the order of the day with all of the makeup brands lately is everyone's releasing their rosy tone palettes. So I thought what I would do is sort of go through the collection of rosy tone palettes that I own, which actually more than I realize, I'm not a huge rosy tone person and I'm going to get into a few reasons why in a, later on in the video, but I was surprised when I was going through my collection of palettes and pulling certain things and now I'm realizing I'm missing the Artist Couture Supreme Mobs, which honestly I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. It's not that rosy. It's really not. It's more pinky toned than rosy toned. You know what I mean? It's got some purple. It's got a little pink. It's got some neutrals. I don't really, in person, that palette doesn't read very rosy to me at all. So maybe it's best I omit that for now. And if you feel differently, let me know in the comments. Do you consider that a rosy toned palette? Let me know. Um, but yes, let's start with the two Big Kahuna rosy tone palettes that I own. And this one, I mean, you could say that this one isn't rosy tone either. I like to think of this more as muted rosy tones, and that is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose One. Which looks like this. This to me is very much like a muted, cool toned, you know, rosy story. It's for someone who is interested in rosy tones, but doesn't really love color all that much. You know what I mean? It's it's that vibe. And it doesn't even look that rosy, but on the eye can look quite like muted rosy. But this is the first, um, which I've mentioned before, it's the first Pat McGrath palette that I ever purchased. And like I said in my video about picking your, you know, how to choose your first mothership and I'll leave a card for that. I would choose something different now, but I think if you are someone who loves muted tones and you kind of want to dip your toe into rosy tones and you love the Pat McGrath formula, this is a beautiful, I mean, look at that. It's a beautiful option. Next up is the sister palette to Divine Rose 1, and that is Divine Rose 2, and I'm going to hold this up and kind of at an angle so I don't blind you guys, because it is, I have the limited edition packaging for both, and this one is blinding I mean it's it's literally a mirror you know like literally a mirror anyway so this is what she looks like inside and this is like I said it's the sister palette to Divine Rose 1 and this is when you are not afraid of color and you really want to go all in on the rosy tones and this one is like half rosy half pink you know like it's giving you both it's giving you the rosiness but it's giving you the pinks it's giving you all the all of the pinky rosy tones beautiful palette. Um, I think it's funny. When I look at this, I look at it, it looks very rosy to me, but I guess you could say it's very pinky because of this shade here. But I don't know, whenever I do looks with this, it comes out very sort of pumped up rosy toned. But, and maybe that's just my skin tone, but that's kind of how the looks come out on my eyes. Very pretty. And then the other, I have two more, Pat McGrath, because we know Pat loves her rosy tones, her pinks and her rosy tones. So next up is the Six Pan palette that was sort of the companion palette um, to those two palettes, to Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2, which is Rose Decadence. And it looks like this. This is very much sort of the coming together of those two color stories, in my opinion, but it is very rosy tone to me. It's very, I mean, especially like when you take this like burgundy tone and you have this shade here, which is very beautiful. Like these two, let me see if I can get these in frame for you guys. These two are so lovely together and they create such a beautiful, beautiful rosy tone. So yeah, I, this to me is a rosy tone palette and a lot of her palettes are rosy tone palettes, but I wanted to pull the ones, and I do have some of her like pinkier ones, the ones that have like one shade here and one shade there, but I wanted to make sure that I was pulling ones, and of course I didn't bring anything to wipe my hands on, um, bringing palettes into this video that were actually kind of rosy leading. And next up is the Bridgerton, what is this one called? Diamond of the First Water, and this is from the Bridgerton Collection Part 1. I did not purchase Part 2 because to me it's kind of, it's kind of a continuation on a theme. And I already have it. So 
This is Diamond of the First Water. And mine is that blue. That's a very rosy palette, right? Kind of like the second one where if you take out that gold, it's, and you know, it's a rosy palette. So yeah, these are very rosy. And the shades in these are very similar to some of the shades that are in um, Divine Rose 2 and the Six Pant. Very rosy palette. Very pretty. I don't love this one as much as I've loved some of her other palettes. Again, it's nothing to do with formulation and just everything to do with what I'll reach for. Next up, I have which is what is probably my favorite rosy tone palette, and that is the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Vintage Rose Palette. And for a girl who does this, if like if I was gonna do rosy tones, these are the rosy tones. And why do I love this so much? I mean, because look at the greens thrown in there. Look at that. So pretty, right? I love this palette. It's a beautiful color story, beautiful formulation. You, if you want to go really pink, you can. If you want to just stay rosy, you can just do these four shades here. If you want to go rosy, add a little green. Boom, there it is. Love this palette. Love the formulation. This is probably my favorite rosy tone palette in my collection. Next up, I have a little baby busy art, which I've shown you guys before. And this is my Paris edit. And when you look at this, it looks really, really muted. But it's basically like an expanded version of Divine Rose 1. When I purchased Divine Rose 1 and then this came out, I was like, I don't need that palette. It's not the same. And, you know, it's basically the same. I was basically saying it was the same. I mean, it's not the same, but it's the same. It's just got this, you know, a few extra colors. And that's still kind of true, guys. But this one is much cheaper. <laughs> you get more shades. So if you wanted to do that sort of Divine Rose 1 look and also have a few more matte options, Paris Edit is is your baby. All right, so I have two dose of colors. I have them in the old packaging. I don't feel the need to buy the new packaging, at least not yet anyway. Um, but I have two of the five pants and I have Blushing Berries, which I mean, says it all. So here it is. I love, what I love about the dose of colors um, five pants is that the gradient is always spot on. And the gradient of this is just perfect. You've got this super light shade and it just gets deeper, deeper, deeper till you get to a nice matte black. How pretty is that? The formulation is stunning. Love these. Um, if you are looking for something, you want to dip your toe into like berry tones, rosy tones. The These are on the pricier side. The, the five pans, I believe, are like 32 bucks. And just to give you some you know something to compare it to the Viseart edit palettes are 39 and you get a lot more shades in these so they're definitely on the pricier side but the formulation is in my opinion what makes it worth the price point because the formulation is stunning again if you're interested in those more muted you know rosy tones mauvey rosy tones that are in the Paris edit and in Divine Rose 1 You've got this bad boy, which is the Marvelous Mobs. And do you see what I mean? But again, it's just edited down. Edited down to its like essence of like those muted, cool toned, rosy tones from the lightest to the darkest. I personally really like the idea, and I, I, I think I've done it one or two times before, maybe once before, of, I, of pairing these two together. It, they do work together quite well. It looks quite lovely together, but you just have to be careful that you don't make it muddy. You know, just choose your dark, deeper shades a little wisely. Next up is the Patrick Ta, which I've already gotten like schmutz on. This thing stays gross. The, the packaging is just so hard to keep clean. But I have the Patrick Ta, and again, it's a mirror, so I'm going to turn it like that. The Patrick Ta major dimension rose too which i have done a review on and i told you guys that my my feelings on this palette i i like it i don't love it um i think the mattes are beautiful but it's just so see again it's like blinding you guys there you go it's just so samey samey on the eye i mean it's just so samey samey on the eye and the shade the way the shades layer when you blend them they just 
kind of blend into each other in my opinion and i mean that's the vibe you're, that's the vibe you're going for you know once you blended these out like really blended them out it's just kind of yeah i just i don't hate it but i i don't love it as much as i was hoping i would love it um and i don't love it as much as the one that i'm going to show you now which i also did a review on and that is the melt gemini 2 palette and I will show you guys this one as well. And I just think this is, for me, and everyone's different, if you love the Patrick Todd Major Dimension Rose 2, or Major Dimension 2 Rose palettes, mouthful, go ahead with your bad self. Live your best life. I don't think it's a bad palette. I think the mattes are stunning. I think the, to the metallics are a little toppery. I wish they had a little bit more body to them. But outside of that, it's a decent palette. It's just for me, it's a little too samey samey. And I feel like I can get that look with it. I get with that palette with tons of other palettes that I already have as, as you now see. But this palette, I mean, do you see what I mean by how you get a bit more variation not only because you have these greens and as you can see like remember i said that the gimme glow was my favorite rose tone rosy tone palette in my collection do you see a theme here though it's rosy but then it has some greens and some other shades going on that keep it from being too samey samey and for me that is a must you know to me the the rose palette from patrick ta is essentially a monochromatic palette it's essentially a monochromatic palette and I personally have moved away from the whole monochromatic thing. I want a bit more variation in tone and color and just something more interesting. And I feel like this is what I get with this. And I had a lot of fun using this. I love the look I created. It was like grungy, rosy. This shade Schmood has my whole heart. Like it's still my heart and it still has it. So stunning. Mateo, so stunning. So stunning. Now guys, let's get into the sad portion of this video. <laughs> so when I did my review, when I first used the Patrick Ta palette and I used it off camera first just to try it out so that I had somewhat of an opinion when I came and sat down in front of the camera for you guys and it wasn't just like me flying by the seat of my pants. I tend to like to try it. I don't always get the opportunity to or the time to, but I try to use a palette before I come on camera so that I can really give you more than just a first impression, you know, so you can have a bit more of a, a fully formed opinion on, on the palette. So I'd use the Patrick Ta when I first got it. And then I didn't use it for a couple of days after. And then I used it again. And my eyelids were so irritated and itchy and they kind of reminded me of when I would get when I get eczema flare-ups the only other time that has happened to me is when I've used the Lime Crime Venus I think it's Venus 3 the one with the pinky tones the rosy tones in it and another palette which I don't own anymore I believe and so I started thinking I went huh that's interesting then I got the Melt Gemini 2 palette and I, I used it on camera for you guys. I did my first impression um, with it um, because I wasn't able to do like a multi-day or one wear test before getting on camera. And after wearing that, I filmed that video and my eyelid was just getting itchy, itchy. I took it off and I had the same issue. And I've come to a conclusion guys that was always there, but I just never wanted I never wanted to actually believe is I think I am allergic to one of the dyes that is used in pink and rosy toned eyeshadows. I don't know if that goes for red eyeshadow. I've, I, red eyeshadow is one of my favorite eyeshadow shades and I'm telling you right now that if I am allergic to anything that is in red eyeshadows, I will flip a table. I will flip a table. I'm going to do a test run at some point with my red eyeshadows to see if I've developed any kind of allergic reaction to those. Pray for me that that is not the case because I don't know what I would do without... I, I love a red eyeshadow. I love a red eyeshadow. Like, I, I'm, I'm telling you, like, I've talked to you... Let this truck go by. Thanks for ruining my dramatic moment. I've talked to you guys 
ad nauseum how much I love green eyeshadow. You know this about me if you watch this channel. I don't think I've expressed to you guys my love for reds. Red metallics, red mattes, burgundy mattes. I love them with my whole heart. My whole heart. And if I have the same issues with those as I do with pink and rosy toned eyeshadows, like I said, guys, I'm going to flip a table. But that's going to be me if I do a test run of my reds and I have the same issue. But that is one of the reasons why I'm not really wearing any eyeshadow right now. I'm wearing liner and I did like a glittery liner vibe, which I'm actually really liking. And with the orange lip and the orange sweatshirt, I'm feeling myself quite heavily. Um, I'm really liking the glow right now, guys. I got my About Face Beauty order, so I'm testing a couple of the products out so I can have sort of a point of, you know, an opinion for you when I film that video. But I'm wearing one of the light spun powders, and I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but what I've been doing is layering it over my bronzer because it's kind of a, a deep bronzy shade, and I was afraid that it was going to have much to uh, be too deep for my skin and have a bit of a cast. But I'm noticing that if I use a light hand and I apply it over my bronzer, look at this. Look at this glow. That's pretty, right? I'm totally off topic here, but I'm just saying because I'm filling my makeup today, even though I. I haven't been able to wear eyeshadow for like days because of those palettes. So I did this video to show you guys all my rosy tone palettes and I love them all, but these are palettes that I have to use with caution and sparingly because I know, and I knew with certain other palettes, but now that I know that I've, now that I've done those two reviews back to back and have the same issue, I now know that I have to sort of pace myself. And if I'm going to do wear those shades, because this is the thing guys, I love eyeshadow. There's not a color that I hate. I used to not really love silvers, but I found a couple silver metallics that I really, really love. So I can't even say that anymore. There's not a shade of eyeshadow that I dislike. I'm not one of those people like, I don't wear browns, I don't wear yellows, I don't wear the, no, I wear it all. I love colors, I love eyeshadow and all of its beautiful, varied, colored glory. So I don't see myself just no longer wearing pink or rosy tones. But what I do see myself doing is being very strategic about when I wear them and understanding that when I wear them, I'm probably not going to be able to wear eyeshadow for a couple days after. So I'm probably just going to do some like colored liner or do very like minimal no eye makeup and a bold lip. You know, I'm going to have to plan it out. I'm going to have to plan ahead. But I'm okay with that. I will suffer for my beauty in this case because I love, my hands are so covered in eyeshadow because I, but I love eyeshadow and I want to wear all the colors all of them I won't let this keep me down guys I won't let it I, I, I was a little sad when I came to the realization and I did do a little research I did look at the ingredients in certain palettes and there was definitely a pattern to certain shades so I am pretty certain that I am allergic to a specific dye that is used in pink and rosy tone shadows and it hurts my heart, but we're, we we move, people. We're go. We're we're still gonna do the thing. We're still gonna do the thing. But I'm letting you know if any more rosy tone shot palettes come out, I'm probably not gonna buy them because like I'm gonna use what I have because I bought them and I love them. But I don't really see the point in bringing in more into my collection. If that makes sense, I think it does. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this emotional roller coaster. I, I, I'm I sorry to leave you on a on a sad note. <laughs> it's not sad. It's not. It's it's I mean, it is. It's a bummer. But you know, third, you know, this is this is this is not, you know, this, this is a first world problem. And I'm keenly aware of that. Like, let's, you know, I'm gonna have some perspective here. It's not the end of the world. I think I'll be fine because most of those are neutrals. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now. Mm -hmm.